Hello again. 25th of June 1967, a television show called Our World was broadcast live via satellite around the globe. It showcased performers from around the world, including a segment by the Beatles. In 1972, Colonel Parker came up with the idea for an Elvis concert to be broadcast live via satellite. NBC took on the project and Marty Pacetta was brought on as producer. It would be the first worldwide broadcast by a single performer. The profits from the concert would go to the Queely Cancer Fund. Tickets had no set fee, but donations were asked for. Not only did Elvis not take a fee for the concert, he purchased his own ticket for $1,000. It was hoped to raise $25,000. Kui Li was a songwriter from Hawaii who had died of cancer in 1966, the same year that Elvis had recorded his version of his most famous song, I'll Remember You. It is said that when his widow heard of Elvis's plans, she became so overcome she had to be sedated. On the 5th of September 1972, a press conference was held at the Las Vegas Hilton to announce the event. The man sitting with Elvis is Rocco Lagenestra, the president of RCA Records. Three concerts were scheduled at the Honolulu International Centre for November 1972, no doubt to become familiar with the venue. Another press conference was held at the Hilton Hawaiian Village Hotel on November 20th with Queeley's widow in attendance. 9th of January, Elvis landed at Honolulu Airport in a chartered 747 and was then transferred to the Hilton Hawaii Village Hotel in a helicopter. This event was captured on film. More rehearsals took place at the Hawaiian Dome and among the songs selected for possible inclusion were I Got a Woman, Until It's Time For You To Go, Little Sister, the Wonder of You and My Babe, none of which made it to the actual concert. Friday 12th of January, a full dress rehearsal of the concert with an audience was staged and filmed by NBC in case of any technical problems on the night. Marty Pacetta informed Elvis that the concert was too short for the broadcast time that had been booked on the satellite and so Johnny Be Good I Can't Stop Loving You, Long Tall Sally and Whole Lot of Shaking Going On medley were added. Elvis also did not like the look of his hair and so he had it cut and restyled. Sunday 14th of January, the live broadcast was beamed via Intelsat F4. Because of the time that it was broadcast, it would be live in the Far East with a recorded broadcast to Europe the next day. Americans, however, would not see the show until the 4th of April. This was because it was felt the broadcast might affect the box office for Elvis on tour, which was in the cinemas at the time. The American version of the Hulloa concert had some extra uh, songs in it. This footage had been shot later that night after the actual concert, with Elvis and the band returning to the stage to perform four songs from Blue Hawaii, being Kuhuaipo, No More, the Hawaiian Wedding Song and the title track Blue Hawaii, plus a performance of Early Morning Rain. Elvis looks and sounds tired. During the concert Elvis announced that they had raised $75,000, three times the target. This would be around $150,000 today. The American Cancer Society presented Elvis with a plaque to mark his contribution. 4th of February, the double album of the show was released. August 1973, during his Vegas engagement, Elvis was presented with a gold disc of the album by the Japanese music journalist Reiko Yukawa. She was in Vegas to get married, and she asked Elvis if he would sign her marriage certificate as a witness. How cool is that? Reiko wrote the liner notes on several of Elvis's Japanese albums later on. The US first release of the album was in a quadraphonic disc, though it could be played on a standard record player. It is the only quad disc ever to be number one in the American charts, and the album has so far been certified five times platinum. 
So here is the American quad disc. And typically with RCA's cover designs, the picture has nothing to do with the special. How difficult would it have been to put a picture from the special? Inside, again, not a particularly good design. We love Elvis in many different languages. Not exactly inspiring. They did manage to put a cutout in the cover. So inside we have an advert for Elvis recorded at Madison Square Gardens. And on the back of the inside cover, this monstrosity. Who on earth thought that that was a good idea? So the discs themselves have the quadra disc at the bottom of the label. The UK version, pretty much the same except no cutout and obviously no quadra disc. But other than that, it's the same. And then a few years back, this set came out. Three discs containing both the rehearsal concert and the full concert. Oops. Can't get the light right. Again, that awful picture. And the original inside cover. But a nice set. One single was released. On one side you had Fool, and on the other side, Steamroller Blues. Great thinking from RCA again. But at least it was better than the UK release, of course, because we didn't get picture sleeves. But the one place that did get it right was Japan. Steamroller Blues and a picture from the show. And this is actually... Um, if I can get it out... This is actually a white promo disc. Can't get the light right. And in America, they also released this. An EP, which was created for jukeboxes. Though strangely, it's got a, a centre without the knockout, but it did come with the the labels for the jukebox. Mm. The back is actually blank. tracks it contains something you gave me a mountain I can't stop loving you my way what now my love I'm so lonesome I could cry quite a rare thing it wasn't until much later after Elvis's death that the rehearsal show was released the alternate aloha So what of the concert itself? This was the very first video that I bought of the concert. I suppose you would call it a bootleg. Released by Mountain Films Limited UK. And I've also got the proper release, but I lent it to somebody and Never got it back. Not a problem. Then came 
the ultimate. If you want to get one, then this is it. It contains remastered foot uh, the complete footage of both the rehearsal, the actual broadcast, Elvis's arrival, and the press conference. With a booklet. One of the books, which is around here somewhere, I can't see it, that was released about the concert came with this. Uh, released by BMG Special Products. It came with the book. And of course the latest thing are these mini CDs. So this isn't a double album. Now the four tracks that he recorded, five tracks that he recorded after the show for a long time weren't released. And then he started cropping up on albums like this, Marlowe from Elvis. A very weird compilation of songs that seem to have nothing in common. Released on the Pickwick label. And finally, Elvis Aloha from Hawaii. Nice cover. And this is, in fact, a laser disc. I've never had a laser disc player, but I just like the cover. So there we have it. Those are all the various versions of Aloha from Hawaii that I have in my collection. There are other things to find. So that's it. Goodbye till next week. Bye for now.